Hey there folks, welcome to another edition of Time About the Movies. We're looking at the movies that came out during the weekend of April 21st, 1989. We got a lot on the cover today, so let's go ahead and get started with the first movie, the biggest new release of that weekend, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. At the edge of the woods, behind the Creed's new house, is the old animal graveyard, the place where devoted pets are laid to rest. Daddy, is church all right? What is this place? I brought you here to bury Alan's cat. I dreamed he got hit by a car and you and Mr. Crandall buried him. Why, Judd? I have my reasons. What did we do tonight, Judd? What we did, Lois, was a secret. But some don't stay. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Paramount Pictures presents... Stephen King's all-time best-selling tale of horror. Gage? First I play with Jack. Ah! Mommy Gage, and I play with Mommy. We had an awful good time. What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so I know that was meant to be taken seriously, but... Could you tone it down a little bit, dude? I mean, I understand the situation in this movie, but come, but, I mean, I mean, come on, man. But, uh, yeah, that's Pet Cemetery for you. The original Pet Cemetery, of course, uh, Stephen King movie based off of one of his most popular novels. And, um, yeah, it's a little over the top, a little over the top. This movie has a lot of over the top dramatic moments like that. But it's kind of fun too, and it's also and there's also a lot of creepy elements to it as well. Like, it has a lot of the combinations of what makes a good Stephen King movie. Like, there are some legitimately chilling, terrifying moments in this, but there are also very funny, silly, over the top moments in this. Like that performance by the dad in this movie. But uh, but overall, yeah, it's a it's a good fun horror movie. Like, it's a really good fun horror film. It. Do, is like I said, it has a, it has those balance it, the balance between the serious stuff and the over the top silly moments. It's what you it's the it's Stephen King movies doing what Stephen King movies usually do best in this in these this type of situation. So, uh, yeah, so that's the original Pet Cemetery. Let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, which is now I can't remember it. Give me one second. Red Scorpion, starring Dolph Lundgren. No wonder I couldn't remember this one. <laughs> He fought for his country. What the hell is this? Now, Dolph Lundgren is taking off his gloves and taking on an entire army. One man at a time. Red Scorpion. You know, for a movie that was the second highest grossing new release that came out this weekend, I didn't even know this movie even existed until I looked it up. But, um... Really, it doesn't look all that promising. Red Scorpion, Dar Dolph Lundgren coming up his first one of his first movies coming off the success of Rocky IV, and um, I mean it looks silly. It looks silly enough. It looks like what I what you expect in this type of movie, over the top, could be silly, and uh, you know Dolph Lundgren. I'll give him credit though. Dolph Lundgren does have a lot of promise in this movie, judging by the trailer here. So um, I mean it could go either way. I mean. He does have he did have promise back then. He did he did show it off later on in something like in the uh, Creed 2, where I thought he was one of the best things about that movie. So maybe there's something here. I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment on it. But that was the second highest grossing release that came out this weekend. So uh, moving on to the next movie, which is See You in the Morning, starring Jeff Bridges, Farrah Fawcett, and Alice Krieg. We have to have a talk. What about us? Now Bear's an attractive woman. A woman is a saint, and a saint is the only kind of woman who has anything to do with you. Yeah, I'm, I make a dynamite spaghetti for Rivera. Friday night, my place, dinner. Does anybody here know how to make spaghetti for Rivera? Why'd you want to see my photograph? Would you rather I requested a sample of your baking? Instead of we separated, we'd each find someone else and wind up happy. Taxi! Oh! Oh, I agree. Uh, rotten odds, lack of confidence, uh, rotten batting average as a husband, 
The difference between the first and second honeymoon is on the second one, you think a lot about your kids. If you not my dog, can't you see that my heart, my guts, my soul, worth of all my head, it's crying out for you. Just when you thought it couldn't happen again. Let's shut out the world. See you in the morning. Yeah, tell me that one shot didn't look like something out of a horror movie. And that's Alice Creek, by the way, who was in Ghost Story. She was also in Sleepwalkers, and she was also the Borg Queen in Star Trek First Contact. So, it wouldn't have put past me if that was a scene from a horror movie. But, this is a straight-up romantic comedy, and it's honestly not a bad one, either. I've only seen a little bit of it, but it's not bad. Like, I've seen worse. It doesn't... I think what does hold the, hold this together are those performances. You got Jeff Bridges, you got Fair Fawcett, you got Alice Cree, you got a young Drew Brees, Drew, Drew, Drew Brees, what is wrong with me? You got a young Drew Barrymore, you got Lucas Haas, uh, Francis Sternhagen's also in this, George Hearn, and um, like I said, I've only seen a little bit of it. I haven't seen the whole thing, but it shows some promise to it. Like, I mean, it could, it's like, it looks generic, but I think the performances stick out more stick out and save it from being a complete disaster so that's my personal opinion on it like i said i've only seen a little bit of it but i mean it wasn't bad from a little bit of footage that i saw so let's go ahead and move on to the next movie and it's speed zone aka cannonball fever Most has never been easy <laughs> but americans have the kind of driving ambition to meet the challenge and live by the rules of the road <laughs> No tailgating. No littering. My car. No tipping. You can be so cool. Why, thank you. Mercy. <laughs> Hell, no, wait a minute. What? On this road, there are no rules. Cannonball fever. So long, suckers. Peter Boyle. Eugene Levy. Donna Dixon. Hello. John Candy. Hello. The Smothers Brothers. Joe Flaherty. Cherry Bellafonte. Aren't you? Brooke Shields. I got goosebumps. Cannonball Fever. So as you can tell, this was, this is basically Cannonball Run 3, although they couldn't call it Cannonball Run 3. Some places they had to call it Cannonball Fever, but here in America it was called Speed Zone. It has pretty much the same concept as the other Cannonball Run movies. Just grab an ensemble cast of past and present celebrities, put them all together in a movie, and just let it write. Just let the comedy write itself. But, unless, but I mean, Cannonball Run worked because of the magic of guys like Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise and Jackie Chan. This movie is by this point, it's like you've got a good, you've got recognizable talents here. You've got Peter Boyer, you've got Donna Dixon, John Candy, Brooke Shields. Eugene Levy, Tim Madison, the Smothers Brothers, Sherry Belafonte, Joe Flaherty, Matt Frewer, Alyssa Milano, uh, Carl Lewis, but there's nothing really funny for them to work off of. Like, it's just, most of the jokes are just kind of generic. You can kind of predict what the slapstick is going to be like. And, um, it just doesn't have that same magic that the original Cannibal Run does. The like, Cannibal Run was is a silly movie. I mean, it's a silly, over-the-top movie, but even by Cannibal Run 2, that, sh that shtick was getting old real fast, so... By this third one, yeah, there's just nothing really left to left there to be... There. There's no meat left on the bone in terms of this. Like, honestly, I couldn't... I wouldn't mind seeing Cannibal Run getting remade nowadays. I think you can make it... Remake the original Cannibal Run, and you can make something out of it, but... Speed Zone is definitely not the best in this series. The hard pass on that one. Now, even though this next movie was not... A big, a big success this weekend, which was only because it was in limited release, but it would eventually become one of the most popular movies of the year and one of the most iconic sports movies of all time. And I am, of course, talking about Field of Dreams. Created something totally illogical. That's what I like about. anything in my life. There's a reason. Go the distance. 
Did you hear the voice too? Did you hear it? Go the distance. Yes. Our Graham is dead. He died in 1972. Are you Moonlight Graham? No one's called me Moonlight Graham in 50 years. Unbelievable. It's more than that. It's perfect. But once was good. Hey! Is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. Kevin Costner, Amy Madigan, James Earl Jones, Ray Liotta, Burt Lancaster. Sometimes, when you believe the impossible, the incredible comes true. Field of Dreams. So Field of Dreams came out this weekend in limited release. It would go wide two weeks later on May 5th. And, um... I really don't think I need to say anything more about Field of Dreams that hasn't been said already. It's one of the great baseball movies of all time. It's one of the great sports movies of all time. It's a great fantasy drama. Kevin Costner, I think, is great in this movie. Him and James Earl Jones are terrific. Very good cast in this movie all around. Amy Madigan, Ray Liotta playing Joe Jackson, Burt Lancaster, Timothy Busfield, then of 30-something. And uh, it's just a really enjoyable movie. It's a really good movie. The visuals still hold up to this day, and... Like I said before, I'm not the biggest fan of baseball, but I do like a good series, a good amount of baseball movies like Major League, what we talked about a couple weeks ago, and this movie in particular. Uh, and uh, yeah, it makes you cry. It makes it makes grown men cry like a bitch. I mean, at the end of the movie, man, when he when he and his dad meet up again, just gets me every time, man. Gets me every time. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't got much more to say about that one. Field of Dreams is a classic. I'd say see it if you haven't already, but most of you are probably already have seen it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next movie, which is Jeff Daniels in Checking Out. Best friend Pat did everything together. I feel great. Like a jackrabbit. Why don't I tie up that barbecues, huh? <laughs> so when Pat checked out, call an ambulance. Who is this guy anyway? I don't know. Pretty sure screwed up my day. Ray felt something he never felt before. I haven't even buried him. They're scraping his name off the door. Company policy, Ray, the hotel of life. You check out, they come in, they make up the Symptoms. All his life. Ray never really thought about it. Switch on the juice. Now. Only the truth, I can handle it. You're helping. You're lying. But it's all... He can't think about anything else. Headaches are often the first sign of a stroke. Oh, Ray. Won't it ever stop? If he doesn't snap out of it soon, you're gonna die, huh? <laughs> it's going to kill him. Checking out. Yeah, this is kind of one of those movies that could have worked maybe if it wasn't written like a sitcom blown up for the big screen like maybe like maybe this would have been great as a tv series but the fact that this is a 90 minute movie and the jokes are very stale not really all that funny i mean it pretty much speaks you pretty much see why it doesn't really work i mean jeff daniels can be really funny he can be a really good f funny comedic actor we've seen in movies after this like armageddon, armageddon Ar arachnophobia and dumb and dumber I will get it right. I will get this straightened out. Arachnophobia and Dumb and Dumber, along with other comedies like Trial and Error. He's not a bad. He's not a bad comedic actor. It's just some of these movies that he picks are not as spe not specifically all that good. This one in particular is definitely one of them. But uh, some notable things about this movie: one of the is it also stars Michael Tucker, then of L.A. Law. It's got a uh, Melanie Mayron. Uh, the writer of this is Joe Esterhaus, who would later go on to become known for films like. Basic Instinct and Showgirls. Uh, Carter Burwell, who d would later go on to do the scores for most of the Coen Brothers movies. That's the score here. And this is another one produced by George Harrison through his company, uh, Handmade Films. I think we've already looked at one from a couple weeks back. I can't remember which one, though. But yeah, this one is another one that's quickly forgettable. So let's get on to the last movie. And the last movie is Teen Witch. Not Sabrina the Teenage Witch, just Teen Witch. High school. It's supposed to be the time of your life. James. But for Louise Miller, high school was a living hell. From her first secret love. I just die. To her first blind date. Nobody wants to date you because you're a dog. A dog! A dog! I'm David. 
Miranda's cousin. Ready? My life is a walking, talking tragedy. I wish you would just leave me alone! But just when nothing more could possibly go wrong. It's you. You're one of us. A witch? Something wonderful went right. Now she's possessed with special powers. You can make anything happen. Like the light, Kiki! That are simply bewitching. Everybody dreams, but Louisa's dreams all come true. Astra, Barbas, Tetragrammaton, Dios, Ishinos, Athetos. What? It's a uh, uh, new YouTube song. Teen Witch. I mean, even though this really isn't Sabrina the Teenage Witch, it's kind of like Sabrina the Teenage Witch in a way, but... I mean, it, it is pretty much like that, and this movie has gone on to have, like, a big cult following over the years, thanks to ABC Family having it on during its 13 Nights of Halloween. HBO and Cinemax aired it a lot during the 90s, and it's garnered that cult following over the last couple of years. It's a very it's a very campy movie. Like, it's not, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just... It's over the. It's a little too over the top for its own good, but in a way, it's nothing offensive. There's nothing offensive about it, uh, and there are legitimately funny moments in here that took me off guard a couple of times. So, it's not a complete waste of time. It's just not in my. It's not just. It's just not a movie that in, would interest me. I think more. I think this is more tailored to females and young girls, and they'll definitely get a kick out of it. But for me, I just thought it was all right. So that's my quick thoughts on Teen Witch. And with that said, that's going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Uh, next week, James Belushi teams up with a dog in the cop comedy K-9. We also have Loverboy, Criminal Law, The Horror Show, Scandal, Miss Firecracker. So we have at least six more movies to look at next week. And then we jump into the summer movie season, which is a lot different now. That is a lot different than what we ha usually have for the summer movie season. But when we get to there, we'll get there. But... Thank you guys for watching this, and as always, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the playlist on the next page, check out a previous episode, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Until then, take care.